don't have any jokes for you this week, but I think other people do. Um, Neil, do you want to share your joke that you shared with the team yesterday? Oh yeah, uh, that's a good that's a good one. So, uh, Batman arranged a discussion of Bitcoin for all the superhero friends one evening. Why didn't Superman go? And the answer is because it was crypto night. And uh, that's a groaner, and I'll I'll mute myself now. I like that one. Like I snorted. I feel I feel that that's a good one. Okay, and with that, <laughs> I think we can uh, I think we can get this uh, this thing started. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining our monthly Discord Pulse. Um, next one we'll actually do as a live um, live stream. Uh, so this is going to be our last voice only Discord update. Um, so stay tuned, but we'll have a slightly different method uh, for doing these going uh, going forward, including um, the one that we'll be doing on Monday as well. So first, I'm going to go. I'm going to go over some of the stats for Phase Three. Um, so for Phase Three, uh, we launched it in. January 18th, so roughly three weeks ago. And right now, if you go to stats to artificial network, we are reporting 27,000 nodes online. Um, it's actually hovering uh, hovering between 27 and 28,000. So we're looking into whether or not that is um, actual stats or if there are some you know Sybil attacks that we're kind of experiencing. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll figuring out if, how legitimate are those stats. Um, so for phase three is, has always been about multi-asset. So how do we test multi-asset? And we have had over 150,000 assets created, which is amazing. Um, and we have roughly 90,000 people, 90,000 graffitis um, with non-zero points. Uh, so we're looking into whether or not people are using multiple graffitis or if people are using scripts uh, to kind of mitigate that. And we'll talk more about it um, going forward. So I also want to introduce some new team members. We have two new team members, uh, Dan and Austin, um, and I'll let them uh, say a few words about themselves. Dan, do you want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you all hear me? Hello? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we we can hear you, Dan. Awesome. Um, so yeah, hey, everybody. I'm uh, Dan Cortez. Um, I'm going to be um, leading the front end team here at Ironfish, and um, yeah, so a little bit about me. I've been uh, doing front end work for like over a decade at this point. Um, uh, about a year ago, I started doing a lot of Solidity stuff. So um, super interested in the crypto space. Um, and yeah, some fun facts. I'm originally from Chile. Uh, I'm weirdly good at Dance Dance Revolution, and I'm super stoked to be uh, helping out. Uh, Ironfish, and I'm so excited about all the projects that are coming down the pipeline. Hey all, uh, my name is Austin. I joined the team about two weeks ago as just a general software engineer. This is my first foray into the blockchain space, so I'm pretty interested about learning more and continuing on building on the work that the team has done so far. All right, um, so with that we can continue on. Um, so first we're gonna talk about testnet eligibility for airdrop. Um, we've, we've been working really hard to uh, to get US participants in, eligible for the airdrop. Um, and unfortunately we kind of have bad news around that. So US participants, unfortunately will not be eligible for the airdrop. And this is due to regulatory concerns that the team has to think about. Um, we're still trying to figure out if there's any workarounds there, but I just want to set expectations that for U.S. participants in general, um, the we're unfortunately will not be able to do the airdrop. Um, so please ask us more questions. We'll, you know, we'll answer as much as we can, uh, but I just want to make sure that we kind of set that expectation. Okay, next up is we want to recognize some community members. So I'll let Neil talk about some of the highlights that we've done uh, recently. Neil? Uh, yes, thank you, Elena. Uh, Elena. So I want to say, you know, I only joined 
at the end of phase two, beginning of phase three, but I can see looking back and now that the community has just been crushing it with your engagement, support of each other, and uh, submitting PRs. And we're incredibly fortunate and proud to have attracted such a consistently engaged group. Um, and so we're going to start using the blog to highlight contributions of or using the sorry Discord uh, monthly pulse to highlight some of your contributions. And so I just want to say, if you missed it, yesterday we published a spotlight on Product Guy. And most of you know him as someone who constantly supports users on Discord. He's always answering questions and helping people. But he's done a lot more as well. Uh, he's been a member of Ironfish since the early days, and he's been really driving the development of the community wiki. And um, the wiki is linked in the article we published, so please, uh, please have a look at it. And with that, I'll pass it on, I think, to Jason, right? Uh, yeah, so I, I also wanted to call out a member. I'm not sure if they're actually in the crowd, but Product uh, KM, they, we'll just call him Product. I just noticed that he's been extremely supportive in the community of various members asking questions, um, particularly like when the team is asleep because we, you know, we are like not all in every time zone. And I noticed like between like the hours of the <clears throat> team's hours of like, you know, 10 and like 2 a.m., he's always online making sure people's questions get answered. And I just want to like recognize that when we see people like that in the community, that's like amazing. We really like that. We really appreciate that. We know that's really tough because sometimes answering people's questions is really difficult. Um, and so I just wanted to call out, thank you for being like a super supportive member of our community. And we just really hope to see like more people who like love the project enough to step up to kind of do that. Um, and, and also I think we wanted to kind of call out another member of our community it goes by Fish Guy, uh, but his GitHub is also Hairtail. Um, you might have noticed that he recently launched a new block explorer called Oreo Scan. Um, <coughs> also launched his own faucet. Uh, this project is obviously incredibly impressive. Um, a lot of people are really interested in this block explorer. It even shows certain information that the official block explorer doesn't show. Um, and so things like that, like projects like that, are exactly what Ironfish stands for. We want to make powerful tools that allow the community to build their own kind of tools or block explorers or faucets or anything. And our general goal is to like enable, enable like crypto development across like a wide range of applications, but in a private way. So I think he's kind of taking the vision and like building things in exactly the way that we kind of expect and hope our community will kind of take the project forward on their own and build things. Like the Ironfish will always build projects like the Block Explorer and things to support the community, but we are really happy when other people decide to build their own and maybe they'll even be better than ours. So I just want to call out that. Thank you so much for being a great member of the community. Yeah, sorry, just one. One more name I'd like to add here is Pratik Garg. So that's another Indian community member who's really taking lead into helping other Asian community members during the Indian daytime uh, when I am not online during the Indian noon hours. So he is really, really helpful. Uh, and we have a bunch of such people across channels. We have so many new channels, language channels added. Um, recently, we've added Filipino, Arabic, Hindi. Uh, Telugu and Portuguese and a lot of these communities have come up uh, become very active very quickly so if you have a preferred language that is not yet covered please do let us know we would be happy to create a channel so that you and other community members who speak the language can engage in a language of your preference so yeah thank you all so much who help others um, selflessly in uh, understanding more about how to use the network and how to participate in the tested phase three. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, Jason, for interrupting. No, that's that. I love that add on. Thank you so much for like contributing that information because you know all of us together we don't necessarily see and can't call out everybody who contributes, but we we see what you're doing there. We love your communities and your international communities, and we love seeing that conversation. Um, so I'm actually going to pass it on to Meg. She, I think, has some really interesting and fun announcements for phase three. No pressure. Um, but yes, I do. Uh, you know, we see lots of people asking, when will phase three end you know, on Discord, on Twitter? And so we are going to let you all know. Um, it will end March 7th. 
So you still have plenty of time to participate, to grab more friends to participate. We'll be announcing this via Twitter and other socials, putting up a blog post um, later today, but we wanted to make sure that you all heard it first. And, uh, you know, please ask questions uh, about that end date and about what you want to get done beforehand or anything at all. We are here to be a resource. Um, and we're really, really excited um, to be going forward. The blog post that we're going to put up is going to also talk about some stats that we have gathered together, you know, just how many over 200 countries, uh, people from over 200 countries have signed up, which is just so exciting for us. I think that directly speaks to what Adi was saying about all the new channels popping up and how active they've been. So thank you all for that. Um, other fun updates, go to Matt. Yeah, so Matt is actually out today. I'm gonna kind of do his segment. Um... Give me one second here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so um, just re really big news. We actually just launched a brand new mining pool. We're calling Mining Pool 2.0. So I think last time I checked, we had like thousands of people contributing their mining hash power in the pool. And obviously, we're not incentivizing the mining power during phase three. Um, however, like that testing and like being part of the mining pool has kind of convinced us to do like a major infrastructure upgrade. Um, and some stats, actually, the official Ironfish mining pool actually has 16% of the total hash power in the network, which is pretty amazing, considering that during phase three, we didn't tell anyone to join it. Um, so that's huge. So what, what is mining pool 2.0? Mining tool 2.0 is a brand new mining pool with a more modern payout structure that you might see that most Bitcoin pools use, which is called a, like a sliding payout period scale. Um, I think we're going to try to do a blog article to kind of talk more about it. But <laughs> right now we're going to be testing Mining Pool 2.0. If you find any bugs, please report it. Uh, but overall, the goal is you should get paid out more regularly with like less failures. Um, there should be uh, ideally significant more transparency into the payouts and they should be much more reliable. Um, I think the payout mechanism is also more fair. If you contribute shares and you stick around, you actually get paid more. Uh, which is very similar to how most pools in like Bitcoin or Ethereum proof of work used to work. So we're just kind of bringing it into the modern age of like pool technology. And most importantly, that pool is open source. You can fork it, you can modify it, you can do whatever you want with it. You can use it as a basis for building your own pool. So you can read through that code and understand how to communicate with the node and implement your own pool as well. Um, so I think that was, uh, that was gonna be Matt's update for today. So, I guess I'm also doing the next update, which is I just want to give an update from engineering. Um, what's happening between essentially now and our mainnet launch. Um, I just want to say we're kind of focusing our efforts twofold. One, significant amount of the team is focused on making sure the wallet is production ready for mainnet launch. And what that means is that um, we're kind of working on things like available balance. We're working on things like pending balance. You might notice if you create transactions, Sometimes your balance doesn't decrease. We're focusing on all these issues. They're super, super important to us to complete by mainnet. We really, really, really want to have like a stable wallet product before we launch. So a lot of the team's resources are focusing on this. I think the other thing is a lot of the team is going to be focusing on stability, uh, making sure a lot of bugs are fixed. But also we're going to be doing some large upgrades to our P2P network. Hopefully we can get those out before mainnet launch as well. So as the team finishes with the wallet, they're going to be kind of shifting over to our peer-to-peer -peer network to be doing some upgrades there, some bandwidth optimizations and things. So look forward to that. Uh, appreciate you participating in the testnet to kind of find these bugs. Really remember we award 100 points for anyone who finds bugs that's verified. Um, and more than that, make sure to remember our roadmap is public. You can go to our website and see all these projects are on there. So if you ever want to know, what is Jason working on or the Ironfish team as a whole? Just check out that roadmap and it will tell you exactly what we're working on. So I'm, I'm actually going to pass it over to a new member of our team that we announced just a bit ago, Dan, um, who's kind of leading our front end team. He's going to talk about kind of stuff he's working on. Cool. Thanks, Jason. Um, actually, before I go, I believe uh, Lawrence uh, wants to jump in and uh, discuss some FAQ updates. 
Yeah, thank you. So this is the one other big thing that we wanted to address about phase three. There was a, a thread about this we uh, saw on Discord a few days ago, and um, I wanted to address it uh, personally and make sure that everybody is aware of all the things we're doing to ensure the integrity of testnet points and the tokens we give out during the upcoming airdrop. So the really exciting thing here, and I think uh, everybody on this call probably somewhat aware of this, is that we are giving out uh, just under a million Ironfish mainnet tokens to our testnet users. And uh, most people in this call probably are in that group. And that's really, really exciting. And we have started the process of making sure that that happens uh, in a fair and secure way. And so it's a lot of tokens and there's a lot of people involved. We have a great testnet community. So we are going to be extra careful with making sure that we do a really robust eligibility process. And so I wanted to call attention. We just put up some FAQ updates and I'm gonna talk through them real quick around testnet eligibility. And uh, this is the start of the process in which we are going from you know testnet to uh, testnet points on a leaderboard to actual tokens so uh this is these are these are some of the things you'll want to keep in mind and i'll talk about what we've done in order to help um you know help enforce them so first thing we have uh you know everybody should be able to log into your ironfish account uh there's a you, when you created your testnet account you created an ironfish account with an email and being able to log into that account and have it be attached to your graffiti is gonna be very key. We're gonna to have to send emails through this process. And if your email is not correct, we've also in the FAQ unveiled a way to fix it. So we uh, expect that that will happen for some people, but I wanted to call attention to it now so that um, you can get ahead of it. Um, second, making sure that the account that you log in with is connected to your graffiti that you have been using to accumulate points. So you may have, there, there may be some case where somebody could create an account and then, or created more than one account and have a different graffiti accumulating points for some reason. Um, I think people were aware of this. We've talked about it, you know, vaguely, but essentially there will be a KYC process. It will involve a government issued ID. So we will be putting everybody who is to get testnet tokens through that process. And uh, that will be, you know, that will be uh, defined more later, but it's, it's something that we feel will be quite robust in terms of uh, deduping people that may have created multiple accounts, that kind of thing. Uh, and on top of that, we'll be doing some additional deduplication on the back end mm -hmm. based off of uh, account activity and such. Our goal here and it always has been, is that one graffiti is one testnet user. And the, the testnet user is the person who's been running the actions to accumulate the points. Um, finally, and Elena hinted at this, uh, we have to follow US regulations for token distribution. So uh, that, is, that is something you know, that a lot of crypto projects have had to do. So um, for those of you in other crypto projects, this shouldn't be so unusual, but uh, just wanted to call that out. So that's all in the FAQ. There's an email change form now linked to in the FAQ that you can fill out. Um, and on top of that, there's one other big change. And this is actually came from community, uh, community member Discord, which we are very, uh, we're, we had been discussing ideas like this one. And I thought this was a particularly good idea. And we discussed it. And we think that this is something that we, uh, we can and will implement to help uh, um, you know, phase three integrity, which is, we are going to enforce that you have to have had one week of hosting an asset or hosting a node in order to get asset points. So if you look at the testnet about page, we've added on the minting, burning, spending point descriptions, the requirement that you will have to host a node for a week. Uh, we are going to also within the CLI commands that you run to mint and burn and spend assets, uh, we're going to add some warnings and, and you know, to, to help uh, give out this information while you're actually using the product so that you won't forget. Uh, but it's something that should actually happen pretty naturally if you're just using the testnet as it's designed. Uh, but we think that there are some people who may not be doing that. And our, our goal is to filter that amount so that the people who are legitimate users get more of the token allocation. So. That's obviously a lot. Uh, you can ask questions in Discord. I'm happy to 
answer them or other people on the team are happy to answer them. And our goal is to ensure that every single person who's been a great test set participant who's been with us from day one gets the tokens and gets the proper share of the tokens. So thank you everybody for your patience while we uh, figure this all out and we look forward to more announcements on this front. Um, cool. Yeah, so uh, next up, I guess I'm going to give a quick update about a feature that's coming down the pipeline, which is um, multi-asset in the Block Explorer. So um, one of the first things that I got to work on, uh, which was super fun, is uh, adding yeah, like multi-asset support to the Block Explorer. And basically what, what that's going to entail is a screen where um, you'll actually be able to see like a list of all the custom as assets that exist. Um, you can click into an asset to see more information about it. Um, so like information like um, the transactions that have occurred in the past, like mints and burns. Um, also like the uh, total supply of that asset and, and just things of that nature. And then when you are actually looking at a transaction, um, you'll also be able to see uh, mints and burns for custom assets in there. Um, so that will all be available um, shortly, like think uh, days, not weeks, uh, hopefully. And I'm going to drop a link to the uh, Figma designs if you're curious and want to see how that all looks in the um, monthly polls chat. Um, and I believe next up is uh, Meg with a trusted setup update. So uh, we are opening up our trusted setup ceremony on Monday, February 13th to the community. We're very excited about it. Our engineers worked hard on it and we can't wait to have everyone participate. Uh, we will be releasing more event details soon, but as Elena mentioned, we are gonna be doing it via YouTube Live and we are also going to have guests. And so um, we're gonna have Jill, who is the chief uh, strategy officer at Espresso Systems, we have Lisa, who is the COO at Aztec, and we're also gonna have Jared, who is also known as Digital Spaceport here on Discord and has created some really awesome content on YouTube as well. Um, we're very excited about it. Uh, we are also excited to be doing something different and new, right? Having the YouTube live aspect, making it a lot more just human for everyone. So please stay tuned. That event link will be going out. It'll be in Discord. It'll be on our socials. Uh, I will make sure that y'all know about it. It's going to be noon Pacific on Monday, uh, February 13th. And please do not hesitate to ask questions in outreach or elsewhere um, about that coming up. Uh, and with just a few minutes left, I'm going to hand it back to Elena for the sign off. All right. Um, I think those are all of our updates. Um, as always, we are here. We're in the Discord channel. So if you have any questions about roadmap, things that we're working on, obviously, if you have issues, bugs, concerns, let us know. We're always here. Um, you know, I we are kind of on the U.S., West, and East Coast time zone. So if you uh, have a question for us at 4 a.m. our time, we may not be able to answer, but otherwise we are here very, very often. Um, and thank you. Thank you guys so much. We are, you know, phase two of the testnet was the largest to our knowledge, uh, you know, layer one testnet of all time. And phase three broke that record already. Um, and it's all because of you guys. So uh, again, thank you so much. You're really helping uh, not only test Ironfish, but give the team encouragement, <laughs> which is extremely important. Um, Ironfish is all about community building, and you guys is what Ironfish is. Um, so I uh, just really want to thank you. Uh, again, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, um, if there's any questions about open source implementation or how you can help, uh, we are here. Um, okay, and with that, uh, I think I'm going to close it out. Um, again, uh, announcement about the phase three end date is going to come out literally in a few hours, so later today for us. Um, but otherwise, uh, again, we're here to, to answer questions. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you all if so much. You, and happy Friday. I want to answer a couple of questions. Oh. We have some in the community. Oh, oops. <clears throat> well, I think one is um, since we're coming up to testnet and we're kind of finishing the project here pretty soon. Um, people are kind of wondering about the mining story. 
I think I've actually seen this question a lot, but Dark is asking, is the algorithm for launch going to be Blake 3? If you want to answer that one, Elena. Oh, sunlight. sorry. What the algorithm will be for mainnet launch. Yeah, so we, we are sticking with Blake 3. Um, so the same format. The reason why we went with Blake 3 is actually twofold. Um, one, there is currently no known ASIC miner for Blake 3. Um, Blake 3 is a very friendly CPU hash function. Um, obviously, it can be run on the GPU as well. When we actually started the project, there was no GPU implementation for Blake 3, which helped quite a bit. Um, and there's no known other proof of work chain that is using Blake three. So these are all the things that actually went went with it, went um, you know like our reasoning for using the algorithm. Um, and we have no plans to change the mining algorithm. So mainnet will still be the Blake three mining uh, the, the hash algorithm for mining. I think that's the only question i saw i think we can answer the rest through text but there is a question like why does ironfish not have an open source gpu miner um and the answer is we would love to we will focus on that in time we probably will not have that for a mainnet launch just because we just don't have time to focus on that right now but we also understand the importance of having it i think I think that's all the questions oh. that I scanned through and found, unless you found any more. Um, there's one that just came in from Slyfox. What is the most pressing thing to support the team right now, other than participating in testnet? Firstly, thank you so much for asking. <laughs> um, really love this question. Um, I think participating in testnet is really helpful. Giving us clear feedback about multi-asset in particular is very helpful. Um, and giving us really honest feedback about what you, what you hope from the project long term but also what you like and don't like about the project now um again i mean we have a really lofty goal we're building the privacy layer for web3 um <laughs> it's a it's a it's a pretty lofty goal and so uh your feedback on on how to uh, on how you want ironfish to, to proceed and what you like about it now um is just really helpful and the best way to do that is obviously to run a full node make a custom asset you know send it burn it etc um so that's really helpful and thank you for asking. Oh. Okay, I think those are all the questions um, that I'm seeing. But um, again, we're going to be here in the general channel, the questions channel, and Discord, um, you know, all day. So uh, if you have any more questions that you didn't get a chance to ask, uh, let us know, and we will answer them. And I think with that, we can um, we can close it out. Again, happy Friday, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, um, thank you, Dark. <laughs> Dark said, y'all rock, keep it going. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, all right. Happy, happy Friday and happy, uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Bye.